and welcome to episode one of the Guide to Ship Handling series. Today we will be covering pilot cards. We will uh, be associating those with all the different vessels that we have. Uh, and I'll be using Nordis Home, the vessels in here, as our example. Okay, so looking at the Leo Cadia's pilot card now. Uh, we can see already it's a, a general overview of the characteristics of the ship. So just starting off now, we can see obviously the ship's name, Leocadia. Uh, in real life it would also have a call sign, similar to aviation. It's a series of numbers and letters to identify the ship. Year built. Dead weight. Dead weight is how many tons of cargo that ship can carry and in the current condition that this pilot card was filled out in uh, we have a draft forward of 3.9 meters draft aft of 3.9 as well so we are even keel there is no trim on the ship at all in this current condition and the displacement is 3,490 tons. That is the complete mass of the ship. You can see here both port and starboard anchors have got nine shackles of cable connected to them. Each shackle is worth 27.4 meters which is equal to 15 fathoms. It's a very standard unit of measurement. It does not change. Oh, you can see the length overall is 87 and a half meters with a breadth of 11.3 meters and just to clarify breadth is the width of the ship often in park cards it will be either the extreme breadth which is to the very extremities of the hull or the molded breadth which is to the uh, inner shell plating and you can see here it's also 11.3 meters. Uh, here we can see it's 15.4 meters from the stern to the bridge. The bridge is allocated by this marker here and 72.1 meters from the bridge to... Uh, not entirely sure with this particular part card if they're including bulbous bow but generally speaking it will just be to the to the edge of the bow itself. The parallel, or the parallel body, is the parallel part of the ship where there is no flare from the bow and no flare from the stern. Just looking at this profile here, we can see that the distance from the keel of the ship right up to the highest point is 21.5 meters. The air draft in this current condition is 17.6 meters. The air draft is the distance from the waterline to the uppermost point of the ship. It's very important if you're trying to calculate whether or not you can go under a bridge, for example. Often in charts, you will be given the, the height or the clearance that that bridge might have above a particular water level. So you can do your calculations based off of that. You can also see here that the propeller is a right hand propeller going forward it rotates clockwise when viewed from the stern this is very important because there exists a effect called transverse thrust which we will be discussing in part three of this series moving on to the steering particulars now we have the type of rudder is a fishtail rudder. This is very important because different ships will have different forms of rudder. You might have a balanced rudder, semi-balanced, unbalanced, and they all behave very differently. Some ships don't have a rudder at all. They might have pods. Uh, another very important aspect to be looking at is the hard over to hard over time. That is going from hard over to port to hard over to starboard. And that's in a period of 18 seconds. That's very important because there is a 
solace requirement for it to achieve at least 28 seconds for that time. So this is well under, which is very good to see. And you can see the maximum angle of rudder here is 45 degrees. You have the bow thrust to power here. Uh, 358 horsepower, 267 kilowatts, which is a uh, reasonable amount of power for a ship of this size. This is more of a uh, checklist for the officers preparing the pilot card um, as part of your pre arrival or pre departure checks. You'd be testing all of these, and this is a checklist so that way the pilot knows that everything here is working properly. And moving on to the engine now, you can see the type of engine here, the maximum power, 1,104 kilowatts, or 1,481 horsepower. And we have the maneuvering engine orders here as well. This is very important, it gives the pilot a understanding of how the ship will react to different engine orders, and what speeds he can expect to go to. There is a lot of variation in the maritime industry with ship speeds. Uh, this vessel here is relatively slow. It only goes up to uh, about 11.3 knots through the water. And uh, 7.6 knots when going astern. Information here is also crucial. Uh, some ships will have a uh, stern limit time. There is also a period that it takes to go from full ahead to full stern. Ship engines are not like car engines where it's almost immediately you can rev up and rev down the engine. It does take time. Uh, 110 seconds is very reasonable. Some of the bigger ships in the world could take anywhere from 400 to 600 seconds to go from full ahead to full stern. Some ships will have a maximum number of consecutive starts. Um, quite standard, a lot of ships will have 12 consecutive starts. And this is for uh, larger ships where it uses compressed air to start the engine and to, and to change the engine from going from a head to a stern. It uses compressed air into the cylinders of the engine and changes the rotational uh, forces on those pistons and there is a limited amount of air. On this particular ship there is no limit it's uh, this particular engine must be unlimited amount of consecutive starts it is not air operated. There is no minimum RPM uh, it's also important to note that the stern power is worth 75% of the head power this is very important because uh, a lot of people don't realize that full ahead and full stern are not completely equal. So if you're trying to rotate the ship using one engine ahead and the other one astern, often you'll need to put the astern engine uh, using a little bit more power because otherwise the vessel will start to go ahead because the, en the head engine has got more power in it. And that's very important to note, and you can see it here as well, 7.6, it's approximately 75% of 11.3. And that brings it to the end of this video. Uh, this is a quick video, just a summary of the part card. The videos following on from this will uh, make some reference to the part cards, but it is good for you to have a background knowledge of what the actual physical characteristics of the ships include before we move forward. So thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Thank you.